Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and uh, I'm a couple wins away from Mythic, literally two wins away. Um, so I want to just kind of play some off-rank ladder stuff. Uh, there's a couple decks that I've seen from MTGO uh, 5-0 lists that I wanted to try out, uh, get a feel, see how they are in practice. Um, so this first one is a Gruel Adventures list, so kind of a different take on Gruel. Uh, you're looking to leverage the adventure package of Edgewall Innkeeper, uh, Rimrock Knight, Lovestruck, and uh, Bonecrusher Giant to give you some card advantage in a shell that normally doesn't have much card advantage. Um, so what it's kind of uh, paired with is your traditional uh, Gruel Staples in uh, Gruel Spellbreaker, Questing Beast, uh, Domri's Ambush, Pelt Collector, and then Ember Cleave. There's also some Paradise Druids for Ramp. So ideally you can potentially go turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four, GG. Uh, mana base wise, uh, four stomping grounds, two fabled passage, and then a couple uh, castle embers as well. In the sideboard, let's see. So this is straight from an MTGO dump. Um, two soul guide lanterns. Uh, Shield breaker is actually pretty good in this deck because you also get the advantage off the adventure side. Some Dragon Fires, some Cinder Vines, another Ambush, and Ceratops. Um, so I'm going to give it a shot I'm playing the list as it is. Uh, like I mentioned, we're a couple wins away, so I just want to play like a more familiar list. Uh, so we'll just play some uh, Rank Ladder, or Unrank Ladder, and go from there. I also got like a Green White Devotion list I wanted to try out, and then Jeskai uh, the Cyclone. Uh, so it's kind of a Jeskai Cycling deck. Uh, that you cycle any of the cycling cards into Jeskai Ultimatum for one mana. Um, but we'll play play with this, do a couple, uh, couple games of each, and see how it goes. Um, as we jump into this, as always, if you do enjoy the content, want to show your support, easiest way to do so for free is to either subscribe on YouTube or follow on Twitch. Both are free and easy ways to help out the channel. Uh, there is, we're closing in on 500 uh, followers on Twitch. Just broke over 2,100 subs on YouTube, so thanks for the support thus far. And we will go from here. We are playing Waifu Sim Zero. Uh, if you do have any kind of cool decks uh, you'd like featured on the channel, just drop me a link as well. Um, been a little chaotic with my, my normal job, uh, so haven't been as able to brew. Uh, we'll come out again with a bunch of uh, M what calls it, uh, Corset M21 decks. Uh, I really like the new Liliana. Ugin's obviously something we're going to be trying to jam as much as possible. I'll be taking part in the early streamer event as well. So opponents taking their time. A uh, little land heavy, but I think because Love Struck's really multiple spells in one, we're okay keeping this. There's actually a pretty good follow-up. So I can go mountain here, shock this, and then play out. Um, oh, well, we got a new target to shock. So this looks like uh, probably mono black sack, or perhaps Rakdos, still a little bit of an older version that's playing gutter bones. Probably mono black though. Um, think here. Being stuck on green mana is kind of uh, awful, because I can't um, next turn play out both. So the decision here is either just play this. I think we should just still go Bone Crusher Giant here. And then attack in. This lets us put on some pressure. Next turn, I could Domri's ambush one of these, or just cast Love Struck. If they're not red, it's a little bit better for us. They can't necessarily uh, claim our things, but they may be playing a Mash Original. Uh, if you're on PC, you can catch uh, the decks right over here there's a little widget if not let me know and i'll link you the deck list i have it all on aetherhub uh 
Fable Passage was a great draw. So this lets us go Forest. Cast this for a 1-1. One, one. Cast this. And then just turn creature sideways. The gruel way of life. So cleave we win pretty much next turn. If not, Domri's ambush could put the counters on this. Yeah. You also get to the point where questing beast just becomes unblockable versus the deck. Um, so this is a cat oven deck, so we'll bring in the, uh, these and these. Uh, creature bait, uh, probably soul guide as well. Uh, coming out, Rimrock Knight's not that good in this matchup. They can just block and kind of uh, sack the cat. Uh, no, we're just playing a ladder right now, or not a rank ladder. I just want to test this deck out before taking it to ranked. Um, coming out otherwise, Questing Beast is pretty good, Domri's Ambush. Probably the a couple pelt collectors. Maybe a couple druids as well. I think I want the other ambush. Just having removal will be good in this matchup. Still have a good amount of adventures to support this. So let's run it like that. I'm two wins from Mythic. Uh, and I've never played this deck before. So wanted to get some reps in before uh, taking it to rank ladder. If we were like mid-tier or already at mythic then i just play it in the rank ladder i've played a lot of the other gruel decks um between historic and standard monsters just the all in aggro ah Unfortunately, my Portuguese isn't that good. If my wife was here, she could translate. Opponents taking their time in this match. Sideboarding and such. Hands reasonable. One, two, three. I think we need, uh, okay, so they are Rakdos. They just never saw a red land last game. Second removal source is actually pretty good as well. Okay, they've taken four points themselves, so we're going to shock the priest. And then we ain't blocking, so let's attack in. Next turn will probably just be the Bone Crusher Giant. If they want to claim it, it's not as useful for them. Ah, they got the oven. Gem Razor is something to consider. Um, there's not as much instant speed stuff to really play around, so there could be merit in that. Um, so what I can do here actually is Domri's Ambush like this. And then play the soul guide lantern afterwards and then exile this from the graveyard after they block so actually now we play this main face because I could respond and exile their cat so we'll get rid of gutter bones that won't come back now yeah, there could be some merit for Spellbreaker. I don't think we have enough uh, green sources. Probably maybe want to go up one more green if we're going up uh, a double green spell.
We got a reader here. So you can respond to their uh, them pulling out the cat. Okay, so next turn just go giant. This is also good if they have something like Croxa. Exiles their whole graveyard. Cat players who take their precious, precious time. To use three more minutes so far, and game one was very quick. Generally, as the Rakdos player, when someone has a soul guide, you gotta force it out of them just to use it. If okay, so they do have mayhem here. Um, so based on that. I think we do this. Make it a 4 4. They need more sacks to be able to kill it this way. And if not, next turn I could just Ember Cleave. So they do have two food tokens, so they can respond. So the problem is if I sack it now, they respond and they sack the other food. I think we just need to let this go. Force the block out of them to get that extra food. So opponent played well around that. They have something like claim that I'm basically dead at this point. They get two foods. Call of the Death Dweller. Hmm. So the problem here, if I pop this, it's not really worth it. Probably dead at this point. So depending on how they block here, Because there'll be multiple sacks as well. I think we just put this damage on them this turn. Play this out and say go. I think we're dead here. Yep, they had claim. Um, don't think we want cinder vines. We have the shield breakers. Maybe on the play, bring these in. Questing beast is still reasonable. Shave down an ambush. Shave down an innkeeper. Innkeeper dies to a lot of stuff unfortunately in this matchup need lands to play spells uh, 
Um, let's just get this out now. Lock up the graveyard. So I was kind of hoping on one they went uh, oven. His hand's very much predicated. Hey, Master Chief. Going pretty well. Just uh, started off. Just playing some, uh, testing out some decks in unranked today. So, gonna wait, see what they play on to. You're missing a land. How's it going with yourself? I think we just pass here. What are you playing in Historic? So they got Mayhem Devil. Even if we just hit a land, we're okay. How's Field doing so far? Like, with Winota Band, it helps it a lot, because uh, their Field doesn't usually interact well with hyper-aggressive decks. Our hands all removal. If we can just draw some lands. Okay, so they have Luris. They do get to cast that. So this is the Rakdos Luris, but with they usually play two to three Luris. I saw a couple lists like this. I think we're just dead. Just do this now so they don't get the option. Um, just pass the turn. Yeah, turn four Ulamog's definitely a thing in that format. I've done it a couple times. Between uh, Leyline, Gairuda, or just um, Luca. It's not unbeatable because there's quite a few exile effects and then if you're playing like the sacrifice decks you can kind of get under them. Plus if you cheat it in oftentimes Teferi just bounces it. Okay so I think here I need to pop this. Want to catch a cat, obviously, but I don't want to deal with Priest or Luris coming back. How many lands are in this deck? 24, so just unusual. Mono Green could be. Dece is it like Stompy or is it Ramp? Like are you trying to get Ulamog out or just uh, drop down fatties? So let's pop this. See if they sack here. So I'm willing to trade here. The Devil's obviously worth more to them than one of our three Bone Crushers. Yeah. The thing is Elvish, uh, whatever, uh, Rejuvenate, uh, Elvish Mystic helps that deck a lot. So you're playing like Steel Leaf Champion Yorvo, I'm guessing. Well, that's a draw. So, fortunately, do need to do this. Best of three, usually all between Aether Gust and just more removal. You usually find more control decks, I find, in best of three. 
or just more interactive decks. Best of one is usually who can do the most linear thing. Uh, I'm going to take the, the chump here. I guess that's actually wrong, because I could have Ember Cleaved. Oh, but they brought in Regisaur. Okay. Um, so I think we just do this. Chump lock on the Regisar. And then try to cleave them next turn. Especially if they get a little aggressive here with the, uh, the card draw. So if I shock in, that lets me hold one back. So I think we do that. See how they block here. They're not quite dead because this gains them two life if they block. So I can cleave this turn, or I can play out Shield Breaker. I think we just cleave. We're dead to claim. Which they probably kept in against us. Claim seems reasonable. Their timing is off with this because they discard the card anyways. They'd have to play this spell anyways. Okay, so they can draw a card here technically. block here take him to Cleveland heartless act claim so actually they can't actually target this anyways because they're dead all right the never draw land but draw multiple bone crusher giant plan of attack does work so 1-0 with the list. So for those of you who just tuned in it is a gruel adventures list uh, kind of the adventure package with Rimrock and then some aggressive threats. Um, and then you have kind of mismatch of sideboard options. So took down Rakdos Sack. Let's fire it up again. Probably do like another one of these takes us probably to about 35, 40 minute video. And then I'll uh, switch up decks. There's another I put together a green-white devotion list I want to try out. Um, kind of white devotion with green for card advantage, Great Henge, Vivian, and then some Knight of Autumns. So I want to give that a try, see how it works. This hand's garbage. This hand is fine. Um, I'm probably... Let's do that. Let's make sure I have all my colors. Yeah, it's a very powerful card, the Great Henge, and I'm hoping with less uh, Luka going around, we can more reasonably be able to uh, play out the Great Henge, because you're not going to get Conqueror's Death as frequent. So a bit slower of a hand. You don't have as many two drops in this particular version. Probably mono green stompy. That's actually great. So we can go 
Bone Crusher here. Next turn I can go um, Great Henge. Ooh, Golgari. So this might be a Henge deck actually. So what I do is this. You fight you. That's fine. So I'm gonna hold this back. With black, they can have something like Mire trade in, perhaps. With Death Touch, their play might just be this Love Struck Beast. Opponents literally just mono Love Struck Beasts. Um, so here, I think we wait a turn with the Questing Beast. Figure they trade there. Since we drew Rimrock, we can get the, the card draw off this. Then we can follow it up with our own Love Struck Beast. This holds back the attacks for a bit. But I can go, I'll probably go Questing Beast if they play with the Love Struck. That way if they want to trade. I think it's important if this is a Henge deck to keep them off Henge. Okay, so it's Golgari Adventures. Um, so in that case, let's just do this. I think if they want to take 8 to block a 1-1, one -one, they can do that. Cleave, obviously the best draw in our deck right now. Spellbreaker is also pretty nice. Top deck city. Illegal attacks. Um, so in this matchup, probably want another ambush. Probably want to scale up. A, uh, Rimrock's fine. I don't think I want the dragon fires necessarily. I think we just do this. Run it. We didn't see the henge out of them, so I don't know if they're running it. So let's run it like this, see what they got. Because like, I don't think they'd be playing Nethroi. Seems like a weird adventure. They might have Murderous Rider. Yikes. I don't think we're getting a better... 5 out of this. Just need spells. Ah, Foul Mire Knight. Not the best. I'd like a Bone Crusher Giant, please. Uh, get a second red for Castle Embrith activation. Nope, just lands. Probably just gonna haste this out. Oh, Roddy too hotty. Oh, Rimrock is a turn too late. So we're taking seven here. I think based on what we're seeing here, it's most likely Henge. So I'm gonna get rid of the Rimrocks, bring in uh, Ember's Shield Breaker. No blocks here. Questing Beast can trade with uh, Rotting Regisar. And then I might be able to punk through some extra damage. Whenever deals combat damage, draw a card. So 
So block here, block here. Play out Spellbreaker. Rim Rocket. To be honest, it might just be playing out Rim Rock. Seen more of this card recently. Ah, we're dead. They brought in removal. Actually, I'm gonna bring in the dragon fires now that we saw some of those bigger things. Um, swim rocks are pretty bad. Cleave still helps us break through some of those smaller creatures. Don't think we necessarily want Paradise Druid. So let's hedge with some Shield Breakers. It also keeps us up with uh, adventure creatures. So we're able to have a better mix. And it is reasonable. I usually board out Cleave against uh, Teferi decks or um, heavy removal based decks, so if you're board wiping a lot. Uh, against creature decks like this, you usually want them in. Helps you uh, punk out the opponent. This is a trade I'm willing to make. So the curve's not bad, like if they don't interact with us or if they just try to do their own thing. is kind of annoying. QB. So I'm actually going to attack here. Because it's not really advantageous for them to block a 2-1 here. Because they're going to want to put the Foulmire Knight in front of Lovestruck Beast. Perfect. I didn't need to attack with that. So, we get them for 9. We can still hit them kind of out through there. So kind of jukes them that way. So not bad. 2-0 with the list. Alrighty. So, let me wrap up this deck. I'm just going to give Arena a quick reset, and then we'll try out the green-white devotion list that I was testing out. Um, so just give me a sec, and I'll port things over.